promises a greater understanding of God and his relationship with humans. The Zohar really sees the Bible as a secret code. Every event in the Zohar, every bit of narrative, every biblical law, is telling something not only about what happens on earth, but about God's inner being. Kabbalists believe that if they can successfully decode the Zohar, they will unlock the mysteries of both heaven and earth. One of these secrets is a startling revelation about God's body and sexuality. By the 13th century, Kabbalah had spread throughout Europe and the Middle East. Yet even as the number of Jews studying Kabbalah grew, their secrets remained closely guarded. Ever since, scholars have been searching for ways to unravel these secrets. In Berkeley, California, Daniel Matt works surrounded by these copies of the Zohar, the most revered and mysterious manuscript in Kabbalah. His bookcase is filled with versions and commentaries in Aramaic, Hebrew, English, and French. They come from libraries around the world. He hopes to complete the first English translation of the Zohar based on original Aramaic texts. This ambitious work is the latest attempt to understand a book that has perplexed scholars for over 700 years. I don't want to ruin the mystery or the, the strange cryptic quality of the Zohar, but I'm trying to make it accessible to a contemporary reader. The Zohar is perhaps the most difficult Jewish text to translate. Most of its roughly 2,000 pages are in Aramaic, an arcane language that may have been used to further complicate the decoding process. On the surface, the Zohar is a novel which follows Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai and a group of rabbis on a journey through what is now Israel. They wander through Here, the, hills the Zohar of overturns the traditional account that God expelled Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden. The Zohar's interpretation illustrates a revolutionary belief that humans can direct God. But the Zohar asks a very radical question. It says, who kicked whom out of the Garden? And the Zohar actually teaches Adam expelled God from the Garden. It's as if we're still in the Garden. But we don't realize it because we've, we've expelled God. We, we've lost touch with a spiritual dimension. And the challenge is to regain some awareness, some intimacy with the divine. The further Kabbalists delve into the Zohar, the more cryptic the words become. It has a very sim uh, rich symbolic system this is a deliberated means to uh, probably thought keep that only those who are spiritual for the enough elite only. will be able to decipher it. The major symbolic code found in the Zohar is the ten aspects of God's personality, the ten sifirot. One popular interpretation shows these characteristics as a map of God's body. Kabbalists believe that if they can understand God's anatomy, they can learn how his powers work. These ancient drawings reveal that God's body is similar to humans. The top symbolizes God's head, which is the source of will, wisdom, and understanding. Below that are symmetrically arranged organs and limbs, representing love, power, beauty, eternity, and splendor. The most unusual part of the diagram contains sensual imagery. The ninth part of God, called the foundation, is the phallus, or procreative life force of the universe. But according to the Sifirot, God also has female components, the final element, often called Shekinah, was depicted as the feminine half of God. This image challenged the age-old view of a strictly masculine God. 
human unethical conduct. Human evil empowers the cosmic evil, or somehow ruins the harmony within God and stimulates evil in the universe. Another revolutionary idea encrypted in the Zohar is that even a seemingly insignificant verse in the Hebrew scriptures can reveal how God feels and acts. In the Zohar, they read the Bible not only as a story about human beings, what's going on in human affairs, but they also read it on a mystical level as a story about what's going on within the inner life of God. According to the Zohar, biblical characters are often metaphors for God's thoughts and actions. The quality of loving kindness, for instance, came to be associated with Abraham in the Bible. So every reference to Abraham doing something was actually viewed as a reference to the role of loving kindness in the world. The Zohar also examines biblical events for hidden meanings. The flood, according to Kabbalah, is happening now. If you don't know that the flood is still going on, then you're drowning and you don't even know it. So various symbols of chaos and destruction from the Bible were also viewed, not in the past tense, but as still unfolding. While mystics continued to explore the mysteries of the Zohar, another 13th century Spanish Kabbalist was devising a new method for uniting with God. Abraham Abu Lafia's technique involved intense meditation and yoga-like movements. His followers would use certain hand and head movements to concentrate on the Bible's Hebrew letters. The most ancient idea is that God has and multiple names. And making pilgrimages to Kabbalist sites names. in Israel, like Madonna did in 2004. A pop star called Madonna adopting Kabbalah 